What's up, everybody? It's Keefe from Ghost Cult Magazine, ghostcultmag.com, and I'm here with the one and only Joel Grind of Toxic Holocaust. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Good to be here. Great to have you back in Brooklyn, man. It's so good to see you. It's been a minute, uh, a couple of years since we've uh, been at the same shows, and uh, super pumped for the big show tonight here at uh, St. Vitus. Two sold-out shows at St. Vitus. Crazy. Uh, Toxic Holocaust supporting Soulfly. On, on their tour, which is amazing. Uh, Soulfly's been through here recently and crushed it. Uh, and again, you guys always do a killer job when you're here in Brooklyn. Well, thanks, man. We love playing here. The fans here are amazing. Well, you're amazing, so that's why we're amazing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, you've, uh, you've been at this thing a long time. A recent album is incredible. Uh, super big fan. And uh, I always, you know, uh, Primal Future 2019, for those that don't know, out now on E1, our, one of our favorite labels. And, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to jump into right away is I never really uh, pictured Toxic Holocaust as a concept album band, but it definitely feels like a concept album, especially with the brand new video. So I wanted to get you to talk a little bit about that right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, the new record is sort of the way I've been kind of been, been putting it is it's I guess it's under a loose, you know, it's a it's a it's a loose concept, I guess you could say, because the fact that it's a, it's almost like a collected work of short stories like basically like it's a book about dystopian future or something and each each song would be like a chapter out of that you know or like a short story out of that so it's kind of like loosely based on on you know a, a certain topic but they're the songs aren't really connected like a you know concept record each song somehow is tying into the other one and so this one isn't like that it, but it's under very similar song ideas and concepts i guess you could say so concept loosely based loosely for those that are watching at home or on youtube here don't panic we're not talking about toxic holocaust becoming a pink floyd not, band not a, prog record. not a prog record although i'm sure you prog could pull it off prog is great i'm sure you could pull it off if you wanted to but uh the record is awesome and it's very uh lyrically and the story as you said from song to song is very telling for these times <laughs> it's a very scary time i never thought a lot of this shit would come true i read a lot of dystopian novels growing up i'm sure you did too yeah. what, what why do you think that this this time kind of dictates these kind of stories um, you know, for me, like, I, I thought it was interesting that the reason why it's called Primal Future 2019 is because I, I thought it was interesting that a lot of, I'm sure the same kind of stuff you were reading is, you know, the 80s novels and movies were based in, like, now is the future. 2019, 2020, these are the times that they were writing about back then as being the future, you know. And uh, they depicted it a little differently than it's actually planning out. But in certain ways, it's almost scarier the way things are planning out nowadays, you know, having a cell phone in your pocket that can listen to you. Everything is spying on you. Like it's just, you know, the technology has gotten so good and we're so reliant on it that it's kind of, you know, how do you give that up? But you almost give away a lot of your rights for having the convenience of what it can do, you know? So that's kind of what it's about. It's not really, it's not like a, a, a political leaning record or anything like that, but it, it is sort of like a, you know, an outlook on, how far can technology go before it becomes, you know, evil in a way, you know, I don't know if we're there yet, but I think there are certain elements that could be used for evil if they wanted to, you know, like if the wrong people got things in their hand that, you know, if everything is listening to you and everything is able to film you, if it's taken under by like some nefarious group, that's kind of dangerous. If you think about it, I mean, everybody has a camera in their, in their pocket surveilling your house and things like that google maps everything alexa alexa listen to me fucking also record my credit card information as i yeah. give it over the phone yep. like say insane insane uh i feel like uh every day i'm living and even listening to this record i feel like jello biafra and ian mckay are like we were right yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. not to get all punk rock i'm sure i know you got some punk influences back yeah, there um dude yeah, yeah oh dude it's, like, it's like very it's scary because it's like almost predicting a lot of the stuff that's happening for real, I have a button. You can't see it. It's on the other side of my vest here, but it's uh, George Orwell, and it says, I told you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, but yeah, man, this record's a killer. I mean, they they pretty much all are at this point. Uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's outstanding. Uh, it's a really good time. Uh, it seems like... Uh, the culmination of a lot of things, almost like a, a greatest hits of Joel Grind, kind of every little era of the band is represented. You always sort of blend the, th you know, sort of all the little subgenres that you favor. But uh, in particular, this one's just top to bottom, all killer, no filler. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, what I always try to do is kind of have those elements that, you know, I, I didn't want to make something that was so far different than what I've done, but I also wanted to build on, you know, the past and do something new. And, you know, I think the way to truly be 
original. Like, you know, every every musician throughout history has, you know, taken ideas from other things. And it's the way that you filter it through your own tastes and stuff is what makes it original. You know, like there is like to even call something metal means there's some reference point that you're taking an idea from to make it sound like metal, you know, whatever that is. So it's like. I think the best way to do that kind of thing is combine all your influences into one thing and put it in a blender in your own special way of like the mixture of what you like and it comes out sounding like you eventually, you know, like, and it, that takes experience and, and time too. It took a long time to be doing this kind of stuff, but now I know going into what kind of, you know, songs, I, what I want the album to sound like, you know, and, you know, I think we've developed the sound where it's kind of, you know, the toxic sound i guess and that's kind of what i wanted to have on this record didn't want to shy away from that but also add new elements to it right on uh, i definitely appreciate that uh, i always think about uh, really like your band you've been around long enough that it's kind of it's weird to be talking about it so you know sort of retrospectively because obviously we're here in the now with this awesome new record and this tour but i always feel like your band and uh to another extent uh red fang I'll put, like, portland on the map and uh I'm always really conscious of that because, like, uh, obviously there were bands before that came along, but, uh, you know, definitely and clearly you guys really, like, got out there and people started to take notice of the city. Uh, I, don't, I, I always wonder why that is. I'm not sure. Portland is a lot more known for uh, punk, the punk scene here. That's been thriving since the early 80s with, like, Poison Idea, The Wiper, and stuff like that. Like, classic punk bands came from there. But for metal, it was kind of like... There was a band Vermont from the 80s and stuff like that, but I mean, it wasn't super, I don't know, it wasn't like really known as a metal city. And, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to, you know, put, you know, I didn't want to consciously put it on the map, but I, you know, you know, I talked about being from Portland in interviews and so I'm proud of you know, like, living there and I think it's a really cool city. And uh, it's kind of, it's like an honor to like be mentioned with like a red fang or something like that because it's like, you know, people know us from being from Portland. It's a unique kind of thing because it's not, it's not like you're from Los Angeles and there was like a million bands from there, you know? That's true. And uh, I think distinct scenes are always important and interesting and, and much more interesting actually than New York where everybody moves here and then they say they're from here. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, even other places like LA or, you know, Austin for a while was the place and Richmond was the place for a while in Miami for different kinds of music. So yeah, I'm always very appreciative of that. And it's it's wild, but you've had tons and tons of releases in a couple of decades, which is crazy. And uh, I think that you kind of predate the streaming and digital age. So it's like you, you started out selling tapes. You're yeah. still selling tapes and merch and vinyl yeah. upstairs. So, uh, you know, grind is not just in your name, but it's what you do. And I really appreciate that yeah. DIY ethos. So uh, more than ever, I think it's like important to still have that. And you definitely still have that. So I wanted to kind of touch on that for a minute. Like, why do you still, you work as hard as ever since I know you and been familiar with your band even before that. So I, I always wanted to kind of like ask you about this. Like you never seem to stop working. Yeah, I, I think it's just part of me. I've been doing Toxic for longer than I haven't. You know, I'm 38 years old. I've been doing it for 20 plus years now. So I've, I've literally been doing that, you know, so it's kind of just what I know. I've been doing it longer than I've not been doing it. So it's it's just how I guess I'm wired now because I'm just doing it so long. And I always kind of subscribe to the thing where it's like, why wait for someone else to do something that you're capable of doing yourself? You know, like I, you know, I still... I release records on labels, but I'm also, like you said, I'm doing stuff in between. I'm releasing my own stuff. I'm making, you know, all kinds of DIY things, you know? Like, it's just that I think it's just important for bands to not... I think bands... How can I put this? I think bands sometimes think that the magic pill is to get on a label, and then they're going to do everything for you. And I think that's the wrong way to look at it. I think it's great to have a label that works as hard as you do because then you have two elements working together and you can spread it out a lot more than just expecting them to do everything for you and you just sit back and you know make music and that that's a nice luxury but it doesn't really happen especially nowadays with the way things are you know it's just record sales are down everything you gotta you gotta put the work in you know and if you like what you do you shouldn't mind putting the work in 
So true. And uh, lucky for you, you've been on E1 now for a hot minute, which is sort of the one of the labels of the moment that just got bought by Hasbro, which is gonna like uh, they've always been strong. It's the reason uh, you know record labels are acquired by other ones because they have value. And uh, I think it's you. Know, I think it's cool that you're on such a diver being such a diverse band with a diverse sound you're on a very diverse label it doesn't have just one kind of artist yeah. or even one kind of metal artist it's like They're, Snoop Dogg on there yeah Snoop Wu-Tang like a lot of things but also just even the heavier artists I think you know from from Toxic to Zach Wilde to Crowbar High on Fire High on Fire of course with the Grammy and even Great American Ghost some good like metallic you know hardcore hardcore metal bands so like it's such a cool little place to be for you guys you've been on like very strictly no, I would never say one dimension because you've been on some great labels, but they're all like very typical classic metal labels. Yeah. And now you're on E1, so I think that's a, a really cool spot for you guys to have landed. Yeah, you know, Relapse was amazing for us, and I, I love those guys there. They they killed it for us. Like they, we would have never got as far as we did without their help. You know, and it was just you know I, I wanted to try something else for this record. You know, the the the, rec the contract was up with them, and you know I've been on relapse for you know 10 plus years or whatever and you know it's just time to try something else and see how that goes you know and right now e1's like killing it you know this is uh you know the first record with them and i'm, I'm happy with the way they're what they're doing and really getting our name out there and pushing us and stuff and you know we're not like necessarily i the only issue i was worried about was that we were going to be the, the small fish in the pond net now but they have put as much effort, you know, as you know anybody else would, you know, for our stuff. So, I'm totally happy with it. Killer, I, I'm on the press side. We're totally happy. So it's, you know, it's great to get, uh, you know, constant updates and uh, everything kind of sent right to you. It's helpful. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You know, it helps you guys look good, and we, we it helps us help you look good. Keeps everybody <laughs> in the loop. Keeps everybody in the loop, man. We need that constant communication between. Uh, the press and bands uh, it shouldn't be this just like with the fans tonight's going to be dope because everybody's going to be jumping on the stage and moshing's very little intimate venue here, but it's, uh, it's it. same thing if you can have that feeling with a label as well as at your your shows that's you've done it right yeah you know it's it, i think it's important to if you're going to put these records out there you got to get the press you know out there telling the fans like where to get the records when it's coming out you know learning a little bit more about the artists and stuff it's it's totally like a symbiotic relationship between everybody where everybody's working together. That's when the good stuff happens. You know? And definitely come out to the shows and buy the merch and the albums from the band because they get that money right in their hands and yep. it helps them get to the next city and all that jazz because otherwise they can't survive. Right? I can't stress that enough to always do that. As my, and we talked about convenience. I love streaming. I love my Spotify, but I still buy a lot of records. I still come to shows. Yep. I buy merch. I've, it's part of my lifestyle. I think it should be part of everybody else's. I think Spotify is a great tool to, you know, I remember back in the day buying records, you know, thought the cover looked cool or it looked like something I'd be into, getting it home and kind of feeling bummed out that I wasted my money on something I didn't like. Now with Spotify, you can kind of, you know, check out the stuff before you buy. You can spend your money a little bit more wisely. And I think it makes the bands have to step up a little bit to make better records. You know, when you... <laughs> You, you can't really put out the filler records, you know, the, the, the contract obligated records anymore. You, you have to put out the good records if you want to sell them, you know, like, and get those fans out to your shows. And I think, I think it's good, you know, obviously I think it's no secret now that bands don't really make much money off of like those streaming services, but it does open you up to a lot of people that maybe haven't heard it. You get on those playlists, people hear stuff that you, you know, might not have ever heard. So it's good. As long as that translates to people coming out to the shows, we still need you guys to come out to the shows and help us out here and, and all that stuff. And, you know, keeping us on the road helps the band survive, really. And um, yeah, I, I think like those kind of services are great for basically the, the initial like listening. But if you could buy the records and stuff, that's great. You know, buy a shirt or even just come to the show. You don't have to buy anything. Buy, come to the show, support the band. Like, you know. It's come up, at, come up after the set and give him a big crisp high five. Yeah. Give him a hug, anything. I think yeah. you're a hugging kind of guy, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. give this guy a hug, man. Yeah. Uh, I love the merch too. All the time. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I think streaming helps with brand awareness and getting people at first listen, and then hopefully they come out and follow up. Uh, so you got this tour, this is winding down soon. What else do you have planned that you can talk about for the rest of 2020? We have, uh, in the summer we're going over to Europe and doing the festivals, which we generally do, we didn't do it last year. Um, kind of 
the whole album cycle thing was about to kick off, so we decided to take that uh, festival season off. But coming back, doing two weeks over in Europe, that's going to be really killer. Um, doing, you know, the usual suspects for the festivals over there. And uh, after that, I'm sure just a lot more touring. It's a little too far in advance to really know what's going on later in the year, but yeah, I'm sure just a lot more touring and promoting the new record. Nice. Are you working on anything else in the meantime, mixing or mastering or anything? Yeah, you know, I, I just finished up, um, actually speaking of Poison Idea, I just finished up a remix of Feel the Darkness, and that was a huge record for me growing up, and to be able to work on that intimately with all the tracks separated and stuff, it's like a nerd dream come true to hear that kind of thing, especially with the record I'm so familiar with. So uh, just finished that, so that should be coming out pretty soon on TKO Records. Um, yeah, all, all kinds of stuff. I, I, of course, I'm drawing a blank right now, but I've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline for mastering, mixing, everything. So, yeah, should be busy. Killer, we always say you got to have a hustle to your side hustle, and this guy's got a million side hustles. That's what I always liked about you. Uh, I'm Keefe from Ghost Cold Magazine. If you like interviews like this with me and Joel, please like and subscribe. Uh, again, Ghost Cold Magazine, Joe Grind, Toxic Holocaust, we are out.